Purdue beats Indiana 87-66. to uh, Big win for the Boilermakers. I kind of felt like the, this game was more competitive than the, the score indicated because of the fouls that happened. Or at least, I should say this, with the starting lineups, it was more competitive than the scores indicated. But because of fouling and because Indiana just basically being outgassed and not having energy left of the game and the Boilermakers pulling ahead. It looked a little bit more dominant, but I would still say at the end of the day, Purdue was the dominant team and they won in this one fair and square. I heard some people complaining about the refs. I don't think you can really complain about the refs in a 20 point win personally. Um, however, you know, that, that's what you're going to get when you play Purdue. It's really hard to get guard Zach e and your big guys are going to get in foul trouble. That's just the way it is. Dakota, what were your thoughts on this one? I mean, what more can you really say about showing up to your rival's home gym and getting the largest margin of victory over them at their home on their home floor since 1934 when Purdue won by 34. So this was an absolutely dominant game from Purdue. This is the type of game that I was hoping that they would be able to put on, you know, on the road in true road games. Um, it seems like in true road games so far this year, it seems like Purdue's just kind of been waiting to get punched. You know, you're going to get every team's best shot. Um, and I think this is kind of the first true road game that we've seen that they really went out and they hit Indiana from the jump and they never really looked back. So I'm very happy with how this one ended up. Um, Zach Eady, obviously you got to lead off with the big man, 33 and 14. I mean, ho-hum Zach Eady game, 33 and 14. But even then, um, shoots sub 50% from the field, 11 of 23, but goes 11 of 12 from the free throw line. Oh, I mean, what more can you really say? And then also Fletcher Lawyer, big game Fletch. Shows up with 19 points on four or four from three, five or six from the floor. And then Lance Jones, you know, fully delving himself into this rivalry with 17 points and really uh, just really letting the uh, the IU fans see what's up. But this, I mean, this is the type of game I was, you expect Purdue to be able to go into. If you just look at Indiana as a resume and their metrics and all that stuff, this is, this is how this game should have gone. But as you know, with rivalry games, you really never know what's going to happen. See, just even a year ago where Indiana obviously swept the series there. You know, I can even admit it. Um, so you really don't know what exactly is going to expect coming out in this one. But obviously, Purdue was aided by the, we'll just say, very and sometimes overly aggressive Indiana defense um, getting their, uh, their starters in foul trouble. And Purdue just walked away with it from there. Yeah, I think, um, you know, it, it was one of those games where, like you said, Dakota, Purdue was supposed to win, but we've also seen Purdue go to Nebraska and go to Northwestern. And while those teams are good, you know, I would not rank those as top tier teams in the country right now. And although Indiana, you know, I think they were at some point, I don't remember if they are anymore outside the 100 of Ken Palm. Um, they, they still are a good team with a good starting lineup. Now the, the bench is a little questionable, but it still does, you know, make you at least nervous enough to say, are we going to have a repeat of Nebraska? Are we going to repeat of Northwestern? But, um, I think Zach Eady just looked like this entire game. He was like, this is not going to happen. I'm going to do everything <laughs> humanly possible to destroy this team and put my foot on them and just say, you're done here. Um, you know, go, <laughs> go home. I guess you already are home, but stay home. We're leaving with the W. Uh, Brent, what were your thoughts on this one? Yeah, I mean, what was really interesting to me before the game was looking at kind of how Vegas had it laid out. Uh, Purdue was nine and a half to 10 point favorites on the road, which you just do not see in the Big Ten. You don't see it in college basketball, but especially in the Big Ten. The home team is always the favorite and the home team usually comes away with a win. So that just speaks to, you know, how how good Purdue is and also how mediocre Indiana is this season uh, from top to bottom. Um, and I think... Purdue going out there and comfortably covering that spread, comfortably winning that game, really leading from start to finish. I know there was a little spurt where Trey Galloway started hitting some shots and Indiana kind of clawed their way back into it, but uh, Purdue silenced him right after that. Um, I, I think Purdue, and, and that, on a night where that happened and where Wisconsin went on the road and lost to a team that is barely 500, uh, I think Purdue went out and submitted themselves back in that driver's seat of the Big Ten um where you know people were saying wisconsin and our and our big banner rankings this week wisconsin was number one on in the power rankings uh, after purdue had had some slip ups and wisconsin was kind of running the table in the conference but this showing just went out uh purdue just went out and proved they're the best team in the conference uh and they're a step forward from where they were last year as a one seed um this team i mean lance jones is just that much of an x factor and he showed it in last night's game 
um, I, I just think that addition really takes this team to the next level. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we got casual Big Ten here in the comments with us. Rutgers down one. I'll do upgates, guys. <laughs> 120 <laughs> left. Uh, Nebraska up three now. And and one cliff. 53 <laughs> left. Oh, well. Missing a barn burner over here. Everybody. No, I love the commentary, Kent. Yes, please continue. Um, <laughs> I have the game in front of me, but I would much rather listen to you than, you know, whoever's covering this game. I don't remember who it was at the beginning. But, um, yeah, no, I think <clears> – <throat> Number one, if we're talking about commentators, I just love Robbie Hubble, oh. Hummel as a commentator. Um, and the, I think I told this story before, but my, my in-laws are huge IU fans and they got tickets earlier this season and, um, they, they got courtside tickets, which was really, really cool for them. Well, they sat near the scores table and they got to meet Robbie Hummel before the game. And it's pretty, it, you know that you're doing a pretty good job when my mother-in-law, who is just a diehard IU fan, asked for a picture with Robbie Hummel. <laughs> Her husband was like, are you sure like you want to do that? And she was like, I mean, he's a really good commentator. I know that he's from a place I don't like, but he does a really good job and I respect him. So, it's, you know, you know you're doing a good job when that happens. But anyway, I digress. Um, I, I think this game was one of the most evident things – this season, or one of the most evident games this season of what I've been kind of commenting on with Purdue. Um, you know, people talked a lot about Michigan during the football season, how they're like this boa constrictor and they really kind of suck the life out of you. Um, that's basically what Purdue does to a lot of basketball teams is it is so easy sometimes going down the floor for Purdue because there are times where Edie just gets a successful post up and just basically just drives his guy to the back of the basket, gets the ball, turns around, puts it in. Um, and then on the other end of the floor, you see the other team going just absolute max effort to even get the ball anywhere near the hoop. And then they have to go through five different passes to get it away from Zach Eady and then do some kind of circus shot in the end just to score two points. And then Purdue gets the ball back and then they just go right back down and pass the ball around a little bit until Edie's open and throw it down there to him again. Uh, I mean, this it's unsustainable if you don't have more than your starting five. And that's essentially who Indiana has is really when Gabe Cups is out there, just their starting four. <laughs> when Xavier Johnson is is doing his thing. I don't know what's up with Xavier Johnson. Dakota, do you have any thoughts? I I, I know you're obviously gonna have your your uh your biasness here, but feel free to have it. Um what in the world is going on with him? Here's, here's me taking off my bias crown, okay. setting it to the side. Thank you. Thank you. This, this just has all the telltale signs of a sixth year guy who's maybe hasn't had the end of his career kind of go the way he wanted to. And is probably starting to see that his time in college basketball is probably coming to an end. Playing for an Indiana team, which last year had promise, but maybe wasn't quite as competitive as they should have been with the talent they had to come back this season, get your sixth year, your final go around. I, I mean, he might try for another, but. I, I doubt it goes. And then Indiana just slowly just backslides this whole season. You know, they beat the team that they should beat, but they lose all of their, I mean, their offer in quad one games with an average margin of loss. I think of like 18 points in those games or something like that. Um, and this just seems like a guy who is just frustrated. He's probably frustrated. His career didn't go the way he, he thought it would. And I think we're just finally starting to see it kind of just boil over the top sometimes. Now quickly, I'm going to put my crown back on. Uh, he mad. He mad that the boilers boiled over in Bloomington. And I think, I, I don't know, it just seems like a kind of guy, the, the type of guy who's just kind of realizing that the, the end of a career is coming and might just be having a moment. Well, I think it affects him too, that Gabe Cups is starting, right? I mean. Yeah. But at the same time, he hasn't necessarily, he obviously was injured for a stretch and uh, right. towards the end of non-conference. Um, obviously a guy who's dealt with injury a lot. I'm sure that definitely doesn't help the um, staying mentally ready and locked into these games where, I mean, that just adds to the frustration. And then you see Gabe Cups and now no, uh, no, I mean, no problems against Gabe Cups. He's not the the point guard that Indiana needs. This Indiana team needs. Um, and you pointedly put it, uh, you know, it's basically everyone else in Gabe Cups. I mean, obviously Gabe Cups actually, I think, played a pretty good game for a Gabe Cups game. Hit a he three. had five points. He had five points. Like, I mean, you get high. a three. Yeah, you get you get a three and a, I think it was a pull-up jumper. For, I can't jumper remember what the thing. other one. Yeah, a little jumper to get five. I mean, that's a great Gabe Cups game. But if that's a great Gabe Cups game, good Gabe Cups game that's got to be frustrating for a six-year senior like Xavier Johnson to look at and go, really? 
this guy. This and is so starting over me. Right. Yeah. Um, Brant, uh, do you see Gabe Cups being the the player that Indiana needs this season in order for them to to make the tournament or have any hope outside of playing the regular season or anything like that? Yeah, definitely not this year. Um, but I, I did read into it a bit, and as far as why Xavier wasn't starting, I believe it was because of, it was kind of a punishment off sending from the ejection from the previous game. So I think we will be seeing him back in that starting lineup soon, especially just knowing that you need that six-year leadership out there rather than a true freshman uh, starting if you really want to do anything. Uh, Gabe Cups, I think he has a lot of potential as a player. Um, you know, I, He's from Ohio, so I've kind of followed him throughout his high school career. Uh, and he, I mean, he was a very, very good high school player. Uh, Indiana fans were excited about him. Uh, but he's just, you know, he's he's on the smaller side. He's a true freshman. You don't really see guys like that go out and have much success early on. But I think by his junior or senior year, he could be that point guard that Indiana needs to really make some noise. But it, it's not going to happen this year. Yeah, no, I, I think that Gabe Cups has potential. And he obviously, I mean, wonderful defender um you know he was giving Braden Smith fits out there at times when he was when he was guarding him so close and doing a great job with that uh but he just he lacks so much on the offensive end I give him credit for trying more with the pull-up jumpers and the three-pointers and stuff like that in this game because I think he realized that's what the team needed from him is is to produce some of that offense himself and not just pass it uh and make those things happen but at the end of the day you know I think I think Matt Painter finally realized that Fletcher Lawyer is the guy you need out there. Uh, Braden Smith is going to do what Braden Smith does for this team. He's he's the point guard that they need in a lot of ways, and he continues to grow. Um, but at the end of the day, um, there's just no comparison to the Purdue backcourt and to the Indiana backcourt. And um, although I think that Indiana's front court is is better than some people give him credit for uh when your strength is the front court and the other team's back court is better than yours um you're not going to win very many games against Purdue especially if you don't have the backups to uh to really make that happen so Dakota you have any more thoughts before we get out of here on this one um just that uh yesterday don't think you could have gone better obviously Purdue taking down your rival on the road never gonna feel uh never gonna feel bad um that, that's all I got feels good go. Feels good. I'm sure it does. Brant, you have any more thoughts? Yeah. Um, only thing for me is back to the Robbie Hummel thing. Um, mm. that my um, my buddy, I was watching the game with, is a huge Indiana fan, and he turned the sound off because because he thought Robbie Hummel was <laughs> biased. Really? So, that wow. was kind of funny. I, I I didn't think he was. I, I say yeah. He just gets extremely frustrated at literally everything. He was screaming at the TV the whole time about the foul. I, I get that as an Indiana fan. I even I feel like Robbie does a really good job about being. Pretty I, thought he, I thought he was pretty unbiased. Yeah, he's usually he pretty unbiased. unbiased. And at some points, I feel like as most like former players are, can almost be a little biased against the team they played for. I thought Robbie usually does pretty good, but I can understand watching that as an IU fan. Just anything Purdue, just just get it out of here. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, and I think he was pointing out the fouls uh, to a good rate. I said earlier that the fouls didn't decide the game. The officiating in this game still was bad. Uh, I don't think it was good officiating, which is, you know, frustrating because you like to see good officiating. Um, but at the end of the day, I've just accepted the fact that any game Zach Eady is in, there's always going to seem like there's questionable officiating because it's almost impossible to officiate those games uh, just because of the size advantage that he has and the way he plays and um you know, it's almost like default <laughs> foul on the other team because they have to grab and scrape and claw in order <laughs> to get a rebound over Zach Eady. So, so yeah. But thanks for listening to the Big Ten Huddle. Please do like and subscribe. We appreciate that. If this was your first time listening, we are the Big Ten Huddle. We cover all things Big Ten football and basketball. We have a long episode every Sunday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night, all at nine o'clock. So come in, check us out. Get in the chat. Let us know what you're thinking. We would love to have you join us and learn more about the Big Tips.